Incredible Edible Aquinas. I am the founder and executive director of the Black Sex Worker Collective, which was founded in 2018 in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we are a collective of individuals and groups that come together to work on policy and different projects that highlight and uh, support current and former Black sex workers. Those, those are our priority. Um, and we do a lot of mutual aid and as well as art projects and, and work on different levels of, of policy to change um, the lives of sex workers. Intersectionality for me is um, the inclusion of multiple people's experiences when we come together as a group in order to have different perspectives on how we can tackle different issues and not it just being a singular thing or just from this one um, experience, but making sure that we consider the different experiences of different people because everyone is coming from, you know, different backgrounds and, and, and so on. The Black Sex Worker Collective, currently, we're working on building our infrastructure um, in the United States, here in Berlin, and other parts of the world. Um, you know, we're working on ways to raise money in order to support the community because we know that um, through a lot of the legislation and the laws and just public perception um, that sex workers are being left out of like just simple aid from like their government or even their community in order to be able to sustain a life. Um, so we're trying to figure out different strategies to keep uh, funds coming in from individual donors. Um, and we're also working on different ways to try to change public perception of um, how we are viewed because there's a, a very skewed perception of who sex workers are and, and actually what sex is, I, I'm constantly saying this, but what sex is and what work is. So we're kind of working as well on different strategies to change that public perception just through like basic language um, and just thinking about, you know, trying to uh, cut this conflation of uh, trafficking and sex work because it's actually not the same thing, but there's always a lot of conversation um, when we talk about sex work with like human trafficking or sex trafficking. So that's like the basis of our work. Um, there's a lot of school suppression that's happening in the United States. Um, and we're trying to push back against that and also work with the politicians that are very pro-sex work and not uh, trying to um, reframe or uh, redefine what like decriminalization of sex work is. That there's a lot of that happening as well in the United States where people are like, we're pushing for decrim, but really what they're saying is that they're pushing for the Nordic model. So we're working towards building campaigns for that um, so that we can, you know, have a better life for us all around and we can actually have full rights as human beings that are part of a labor force. Um, and speaking of labor, <laughs> we're also working on... Um, on more so having our fight be about labor rights and not just sex worker rights. Um, because I, I think when we kind of keep it there at it just being like a sex worker issue, whatever that means to public perception, it means a lot. I can go on about that, but we don't have time for that. Um, we're trying to just make sure that people understand that we're not just sex workers. We're also, we're also a part of the work market. And, um, you know, we want you to see us as laborers. We want you to we want you to see us as people that are contributing to this society, that contribute to our community. So we're you know fighting for that labor cause. And here in Berlin, um, we you know we are part of um, the, the the workers union now. We just just did that um, at like the end of 2020. Um, so you know just trying to like make sure that people understand that we're here and you know we're not going anywhere. 
With intersectionality within um, the collective, what we do is we, anyone that's a current or former black sex worker, actually, actually anyone actually can really be a part of the collective. You don't have to be black, but what needs to be understood is that this is going to be black leadership and sex worker rights issues are always going to be at the forefront. So anyone that actually gets involved with the collective, doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what gender you are, you come in, you just know that you're going to be dealing with black uh, feminine leadership. And this is all about sex worker issues at the from the gate at the forefront always. That's the foundation. Um, and we, you know, we are very much open and and happy to have people from different um, educational backgrounds and 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 life experiences to come in um, because we understand that you know there are people that have wherever whatever walk of life that you're from, you have something valuable to add. Um, everyone does not know everything and you know there's things that we might not consider um, for different reasons. We try to make sure that um, when people are coming in that we take everybody into consideration because we're all here existing you know in with our, with different experiences um, and you know we want to be able to have that we want to be able to say that you know we thought about this really deeply and we didn't just like leave it at a superficial level. <laughs>